What is going on guys? Welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn how to professionally evaluate the quality of clustering and how to find the optimal number of clusters in this unsupervised machine learning task. So let us get right into it. All right, so clustering is an unsupervised machine learning task, which basically means that we don't have a correct solution that we can compare our clustering to, to evaluate its quality or its performance. This is something that exists in supervised learning, for example, in classification, it does not exist in unsupervised learning because the nature of unsupervised learning is that you don't have the true answer that you can compare your results to. So maybe here as a quick visualization, if you have a bunch of data points, that already have a label. So for example, this would be the red class, or this would be the yellow class. Those are just some data points here. And this would be the turquoise class. If I now try to evaluate this model with a test set, what I do is I introduce a new instance, for example, this one here, and I let my model label this instance. So for example, it would say it's a turquoise instance. And then I would look into the test set into the actual label. So what's the actual answer? And it would tell me, yes, this is actually turquoise. Good job. This is a good performance for this particular instance. And then I would do that for a bunch of different instances. And then I would get an accuracy score. How many times does my model uh, actually label new instances correctly? And this would be how you evaluate supervised um, classification tasks, how you, how you evaluate your models in this supervised classification task. Uh, with clustering, we have a different use case. Clustering means we have a bunch of data points like those and like those and like those maybe, and we don't actually know anything about them. We just know those are the data points and now we want to cluster to them. So we don't actually also know how many clusters exist or should exist. We only know those are the data points and I'm looking for N clusters. And N is something that we can just uh, decide on. So we can say here n equals three, I'm looking for three clusters, what are the three clusters, and then I could say, okay, this is cluster one, this is cluster two, and this is cluster three. That's the solution here. Now, this seems in this case to be a pretty good solution, because we have three well separated blobs, you could say so three well separated groups of data, and it makes sense to say, those are the three clusters. Now, theoretically, something that you could also do is you could say, okay, this is a cluster, this is a cluster, and this is a cluster. Now, this is obviously for us when we see this, this is a worse result than before. This is not as good as the previous clustering. But the question is, how do you quantify that? Because you don't have a correct solution. You cannot just say, okay, the correct clustering is uh, the three different blobs here, you would need something mathematical, because we have unsupervised learning, we don't have any labels here, we need something to actually calculate the quality of the clustering. And this is what we're going to talk about in this video today, how do we find, uh, or how do we evaluate clustering? And also, how do we choose the proper n? How do we choose the correct n? Because of course, I could also just say, those are the data points here, uh, I'm looking for two clusters. So which are the two clusters? And then I could say, okay, this is one cluster here. And then I could say, this is one cluster here. Or maybe I could say something like, um, this is one cluster, sorry, this is one cluster here. And then we have this cluster, which is probably a little bit better. But you can see that two is not the best number to choose here. And neither is four, I could also say I'm looking for four clusters. So maybe this, uh, maybe this, then maybe this, and then maybe this. So you can see that the quote unquote, correct or optimal solution here is to use three clusters. But the question is, how do you figure that out? Because not always will you have a nice visual representation, sometimes you have 100 dimensional data. So you don't really see this right away. So in this case, it's quite simple, we see three blobs, so it's three clusters. But how do you do that? Mathematically, how can you uh, actually determine the correct number of clusters, the optimal number of clusters. And the two things that we're going to look at today are called inertia and the silhouette score. I hope I'm typing this correctly. Silhouette score. Yeah. Uh, and basically inertia means how close are the different points to their cluster centers when I do the clustering. So if we have these, how close are, how tight are the clusters, you could say, and a silhouette score tells us 
how tight are the clusters, but also how far are the instances away from the other cluster centers. That's also important. Uh, you can also look up the actual mathematical formula if you're interested in that, but that's the basic idea. Inertia tells you how close are the individual instances to the cluster centers, so how tight are the clusters, and the silhouette score also takes into account uh, how well separated the clusters are, because you can have quite tight clusters, but they're also quite close to all the other cluster centers, which would mean that the clustering is not as good. Um, so this is what we're going to look at in this video today. And for this, we're going to install a couple of packages. We're going to use pip to install uh, scikit-learn, matplotlib, and numpy. Those are the three packages we're going to need today. And we're going to start with the imports. We're going to import numpy snp. We're going to import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. And we're going to import uh, from sklearn dot metrics, we're going to import the silhouette score, we're going to import uh, from sklearn dot cluster, we're going to import the k means clustering, which I already implemented from scratch. So if you want to check that out, go to my channel and type k means, uh, you will find a video k means from scratch in Python, where I ex explain mathematically how k means works. Uh, and then we're going to also import from sklearn dot data sets, we're going to import a function make blobs, so that we can artificially craft some random uh, cluster or random data that is somehow divided into clusters already. And we're going to start with that we're going to say x and y, x being the data, y being the, the class, y being the color, the target variable, we're going to say here, make blobs, and we want to have 500 samples, so 500 data points, uh, and we're going to generate them in five centers. So we're going to have basically five would be in this case, we artificially craft a data set, which has five clusters, but we don't actually use the labeled data set. So we don't actually use the Y when we do the clustering, we just use the X and we try to figure out the best number of clusters. Um, so we could say here cluster standard deviation is 0 0.6, for example, and then we're going to use a random state just so we have the same data set every time. So let's go with 40, for example. Um, and we can look at this data now, I can say plt scatter, and I can say x first dimension. So x zero and x one, and then plt show. This is what our uh, model will see this is the data that we will show to the clustering algorithm to k means uh, exactly like this without the proper classes without the proper labels. So we have here obviously five class uh, clusters, uh, but we don't have uh, the information about the correct labels. Now we can also briefly display it just for us visually, we can say c equals y to say that the color depends on the y variable, and then you would see the quote unquote correct solution. But since we're doing unsupervised learning, we're going to act like this does not exist. So we don't have a correct solution. Uh, but we do know, of course, that five is the correct number. So how can we figure that out if we don't know it? Uh, well, for this, we're going to use inertia first. And inertia is something interesting, because the more clusters you get, the more clusters you use, you will always get smaller inertia. This is just the nature of it. The more clusters you have, the closer, the tighter the clusters are going to be because you just have more clusters. So even if you go with 500 clusters, uh, you will have better inertia. So 500 clusters will have a better inertia than 400 clusters, even though obviously the, perf uh, the perfect number would be five. So we're going to talk about how to evaluate this here in a second. But we're going to start now with uh, by creating a list called cluster underscore numbers. And we're going to say two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, those are the clusters that we're going to look at. So we're going to take the data. And we're going to ask what is the perfect number ranging between two and nine. So which number is the best between two and nine. Um, and then we're going to also say that we want to keep track of the inertia for the different clusters. So inertia is an empty list. And we're going to say now 4k in cluster numbers, we're going to uh, say k means equals k means and we're going to basically do the clustering using n clusters. So n clusters is going to be k, then the random state, let's go with 
42 here, the answer to everything, or let's go with 40. I don't care. Um, and then we're going to fit that on the x data. So we're going to do the clustering with n clusters being n being two, three, four, and so on up until nine. And then we're going to say that I want to have the inertia, I want to append to the inertia list, the inertia for that model. So it is, I think, inertia underscore. Um, and then we can actually just print that to see the results. And you can see now, uh, we get some warnings and init. Okay, maybe we have to just say n init equals 10 to remove the warnings. And then you can see those are now the inertia uh, values, the inertia metric that we get for the different number of clusters. And you can see that we can even go on to 500 and you will always get a smaller score. So how can we use this to actually evaluate uh, the perfect or how, how can we actually use this to find the perfect number, the optimal number of clusters? Since this is always getting better, why not just keep increasing the number? And the answer to that is a visual answer, we're going to go ahead and say plt dot plot, and we're going to plot the cluster numbers against the inertia or the inertia against the cluster numbers. Uh, and we're going to say marker equals O. And we're going to actually, we don't need to do all the styling, we're just going to show this. And then you will see a very obvious pattern. On the x axis, you have the cluster numbers and here you have the inertia score. And you can see again, all of this is always going down. But what we're actually looking for here is the so called elbow, and you will not always find an elbow in an inertia plot. In this case, it's quite simple, because the data is so obviously uh, made for five clusters, but you can see that you get some massive decreases in inertia with every new cluster up until this point. If you go beyond five, you can see yes, the inertia decreases, but it's nothing and nothing compared to this decrease here. So you can see from two to three, we get a massive decrease. So a massive improvement in the clustering quality. And this happens also uh, from three to four, from four to five, but then from five to six, six to seven, and so on, we get very small decreases in inertia. So the quality is theoretically getting better here. But we're looking for this elbow here, where the rapid decrease stops. And this would tell us already that five is a pretty good number to look at. But again, you're not always going to find such uh, obvious elbows in the inertia plot. This is not always the case. And because of that, what we're actually also looking for in addition to the inertia is the silhouette score. So I'm going to create a new list here, silhouette scores equals empty list. And then we're also going to say silhouette underscore average equals silhouette score. Um, and we're going to have the x data. And we're going to have the k means labels, which is our clustering results. So k means underscore labels, or k means dot labels underscore, sorry. And then we're going to say silhouette scores dot append, and then the silhouette average. So this basically then gives us the silhouette score. For this clustering, as I said, the silhouette score also takes into account how far away we are from the other centers, the inertia only cares about how tight are the individual cluster, uh, clusters. But we also want to know how well separated are the clusters. And this is interesting, because here now, increasing the number of clusters will not always uh, result in a better silhouette score, because when you have 500 clusters for 500 instances, all the clusters are going to be right uh, beside each other, because of course, the data doesn't consist of 500 clusters. So you would get a pretty bad result. And the best result for the silhouette score will probably be the one with the optimal number of clusters in this case, five. So we can actually go ahead now and say plt plot, and then cluster numbers and silhouette scores, and marker equals. Oh, and then plt show. And you will see hopefully, there you go, a very obvious pattern, you can see that the silhouette score increases, as we increase the number of clusters. But then when we reach five, we get the peak, and then it decreases from there again, because that now we're adding new clusters. And of course, the inertia goes down, but 
the clusters are now closer together, which is not optimal. You want to have five well-separated clusters. When we look at the data here, um, having five clusters means we have tight clusters and they're quite far apart. If I now go ahead and say there are six clusters, maybe you get a mix. So this might be one, this might be one, this might be one, and this might be two clusters now, and this is another cluster. So this one is now two clusters that are actually just one blob. And because of that, they're quite close together. And this, of course, decreases the silhouette score. That's the basic idea. And this is how you evaluate the quality of your clustering. Now, before we end this video, maybe to show you an example where it's not as obvious, we can change the random state here from 40 to 41. I looked at this already. And now you can see we do have five blobs, but you can see that because of the randomness, uh, two of the blobs are actually quite close together. So even though we created the data with five centers, now it is reasonable to also just have four clusters. And you can see now, when we look at the plots here, that actually the elbow happens to be at four, even though, again, we used five centers. Uh, and you can also see that the silhouette score seems to peak at four, even though, again, we used five centers. And you can actually vary the random state a little bit. You can do it with uh, 42 here again. Uh, now we do have five blobs, but those are quite close together. So the result should not be as obvious. Uh, when we look at the inertia, you can see we have some elbow here already. But then again, we do have some decrease here. So it's not as obvious. And here, you can see it actually says four is slightly better than five, but it's not exactly uh, obvious. So in this case, you would have to do some manual thinking or you would just go with four, you would go with five, I don't know. But you can see it's not always as obvious, even when you artificially create data with five centers. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.